Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another Two Minute Tip. I'm Rob Cohey, Industry Solution Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing. Today, we're going to talk about sketch blocks. Great way to manage your blocks. Let's get some tunes on. Nah, I don't like that one. Hold on a sec. All right. Let's see if this one will work for us. All right. I like it. So, the uh, the last unscripted series that I did uh, focused a little bit on this uh, this curtain assembly. And I'm getting a lot of questions on, hey, how'd you build that out? And one of the things that I used to build it out, I figure we might as well talk about in a two-minute tip. And I used sketch blocks to lay them out. Here, I had brought over a great deal of AutoCAD data. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to recreate the sketches in Inventor. And you can do copy-paste or bring those in. They're just regular Inventor sketch lines and such. And I wanted them to behave a little bit differently. So once you bring those sketches in, you're able to do your from to extrusion that I can get the appropriate offset and it fits inside the window and all those types of things. And as you can see, it was a really, really detailed sketch and I didn't want to have to redraw that. So let's step back a little bit and figure out how I did it. First thing you need to do is start a new sketch, of course. And then I'm gonna open up AutoCAD and I'm just gonna copy the geometry that I need from AutoCAD, just a right click, copy to the clipboard. And then I'm gonna hop back over into Inventor and I'm just going to paste this into the sketch. It's that easy, copy and paste. Now, the thing that you need to know about copy and paste, or anytime you bring in lines, arc, circles, uh, sketch geometry in from AutoCAD, you got to know it's not constrained. Now, you can constrain points and some of the other things if you do a different type of import. But there's an easier way, I think, uh, to manage this. And this is how I uh, used it in this particular example. The first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to add a point in which is going to be the center point, the reference point, um, rotation point, if you will, or insertion point in this particular case for a block. Now, I want all of this geometry to behave like a block does in AutoCAD. So you saw when I grabbed hold of that line, I moved it around. Um, I want it to just, I'm going to grab the whole thing, right? So now that I have the ability to choose create block, I just go through and just like you did in AutoCAD. Select your geometry, select your insertion point, name the block, hit OK, and now all of this geometry in this particular sketch behaves like it's a block in AutoCAD. Grab hold of the corner, you notice I don't get any skewing of lines or disconnected lines and such. And that's exactly what I need for this particular uh, example because I've got four or five different parts here that I'm going to use from this base sketch in this assembly to build out this design. Now to position it, again, it being a block, it's a lot easier to position. You saw I was able to rotate it. And then here I'll just move it from that point to that point using a concentric constraint, or coincident constraint rather, and I'm good to go. Add a horizontal constraint to it, and now I have a fully constrained sketch. So that was it. Again, we're going to build upon this a little bit more. Follow me on Twitter, and don't forget to visit us at manufacturingcommunity.autodesk.com. Have a great day.